Hi, and welcome to another segment of KISS. That is Keep It Simple, Sir. Keep It Simple, Sin, and H.S. Senor, Sisters and Saints of God. We thank you for another protection. We come your way into your home. We have a very special production today, and the subject is Your Health is Your Wealth. Your Health is Your Wealth. And we have a beautiful brother from our community uh, right here in the area, the Jim City. His name is Brian Abram. And at this time, we let Brian introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself. Brian, welcome to our segment of KISS. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Uh, my name is Brian Abram. Uh, I'm a father. I'm a husband. Um, and I am currently the recovery home administrator for Miami Valley Housing Opportunities. Uh, Miami Valley Housing Opportunities serves those who are homeless and we help to find them uh, permanent supportive housing. So thank you for inviting me to your platform. Great God, and it seems like you are the, uh, quite a busy person. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty busy yes. these days. And, and, and as I understand, I won't sell a bird, tell me, but you tell me you're quite fit health-wise. I, I try to take my health uh, pretty serious. Yes, I, uh, uh, the thing is our subject being health is your wealth, Mm -hmm. A lot of times we do not really realize what good to have wealth if you don't have health. That's true. And you wouldn't be able to really enjoy your wealth if you don't have your health. That's true. Um, I got, uh, my journey's a little different. Okay. Um, I really, I've been athletic all my life, played sports growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's what I consider my health. At that point, I was physically active, but like what, what I was putting in my body mm -hmm. wasn't. So I've lost several family members. I lost mm -hmm. my grandmother to cancer in 2006, breast cancer. Yeah. Um, my grandfather, my mother's dad, he um, died of a stroke mm -hmm. um, in 2014. Um, my grandfather, my dad's father, he died in uh, right at the onset, at the beginning of COVID. He was 88, he died okay. of cancer. Okay. Um, and my mother's mom, she currently has cancer now. Okay. Um, she gets surgery um, in a couple of weeks. Mm. So it really, uh, it hits home for me um, yeah. personally. So I would say back in 2017, that's when I really start um, taking my health a little bit more seriously. My dad was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. Um, for those that don't know what that is, it's a cancer that attacks your uh, lymphatic system. Your uh, lymphatic system, um, it really, it protects you from diseases. Okay. So it's a part of, it's a blood, it's a blood cancer. Yes. So that struck fear in me, because my dad is, he's everything to me. Yes. You know what I mean? So, yes. <clears throat> and in those moments, I was, you know, I was preparing to lose him. Yes. Because I'm like, man, he has cancer. I lost everybody else that had cancer, so yes. I was preparing for him to leave, and it's like, it's hard for me to talk about. Yes. I get, I can get really emotional about oh, that I'm because, sure. you know. But, you know, he's he's played a big role in my life. Yes. You know, I'm the man I am today because of him. So, yeah. you know, it was a hard battle. He uh, decided um, to take chemo, mm -hmm. and he he beat it. Okay. So, of course, I was happy about that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. But around that time when he was going through that, taking his chemo, I was like, man, I gotta do better, you know? Um, I've always thought I lived a healthy lifestyle in terms of like some of the things I ate. Well, I eat fruits and vegetables, so I'm okay. Uh -huh. And I'm like, no, it's, it's more to it than that. So I just started studying. I'm like, I'm a student, I'm a student of life. So I found out about, uh, I was doing some research, found out about this gentleman named Rick Poole. You may, you may know who he is. He owns the uh, health food store in Dayton yes. off of uh, Siementhaler in um, Philadelphia. Yes. So I, I went to his website, and I'm like, oh, I never heard of this place. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And I read his story. You know, he lost his father in the 80s to lung cancer, I believe. Yes. Then I believe four years later, he was diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. in 84, which is the year I was born. <laughs> <Okay>. So... <laughs> 
I, uh, I said, man, this, this place has some good, you know, I was reading about the supplements that they had and the, the juices and this different herbs that I've never heard of. Yes. So I go one day, I walk through the door, who do I see? Rick Poole. Yes. And I'm, he's like, hey, hi, can I help you, sir? And I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> I just see all these herbs and vitamins, and I'm like, man, this point me in the right direction. He said, well, what are you trying to do? And I was like, man, I just want to be healthy. Yes. So he just started giving me the game on all these different herbs that I've never, like I said, heard of. Yes. So I just became intrigued by that. So I bought them. You know, I, was take, I started taking the supplements, and I would say I showed up to the store maybe a couple months later and he saw me and uh -huh. he may not even remember this but he was just like man you look good you look good man you've been taking them and I was just like damn I, did I look that bad when I came in the first time you know what I mean so <laughs> that cracked me up but uh and like since then since 2017 like I'm like if if Natural Foods Plus had a spokesperson like I would be that guy like I'm there maybe three days out of the week, three to four times out of the week, yes. getting smoothies, getting natural juices, yeah. you know, then I start incorporating it into my, you know, my household. Like okay. I start teaching my children about it. I got two daughters. Okay. You know, I start sneaking in their, in their foods. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they don't know what that stuff is, but. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so like that's how I started my health journey. Um, long story short, but. You know, I continue to just, you know, give give those that wisdom that may not may not be in the know. Right. That there there are things out there, there are supplements out there, um, other than the foods that we eat, because okay. we know all the foods we eat are not they're not always the healthiest. Right. A lot of them today is so so uh, as you say genetically modified and Definitely. steroids and yes a lot of things that they're putting in the food today has no nutrition value for our body not at all it just feel a void of the stomach to make you feel that you have something in your body like full but and that's why right now i know most of us with baby boomers mm -hmm. that's when they really start turning away from pharmaceuticals right and looking for the natural approach uh now my cousin and uh family we had a health food store years ago. Mm -hmm. Of course, the world wasn't ready for us at the time. Right. That's before Ricky Poole and a lot of other health food stores that we now have in the Dayton area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have down there on Gettysburg. We had a health food shop that uh, we actually have classes in the evening that mm -hmm. teach the different ones, the different herbs that help the body and for different things they are. Right. I know the Hemby and mm -hmm. <laughs> some of the other old herbs that we had. Right. Uh, but the thing is, as you were saying, because uh, the lack of nutrient values in our food is causing a lot of the ailments that we're having today. Correct. A lot of the sickness, a lot of the processed foods. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you'd like to show a little, share a little of your intellect. But first, let me go to a biblical scripture. Okay. Uh, being a Christian a talk show, I always have a good biblical scripture. And I went to Third John, and they were able to pull it up again. Uh, I think I had that on the page it's closing there it says beloved third john first chapter and second verse say beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth so it's god's will that we prosper mm. but also that we have health right when we prosper, and I said a little bit earlier, how can you enjoy any wealth and you're sick? That's true. Or you spend most of your wealth on trying to regain, regain your health. Exactly. I had a little uh, slogan years ago. I uh, can't remember. It said, we squander our health to get our wealth. We toil and we slave. Mm. Then we spend all of our wealth to get back our health. Yes. And all we get is a grave. Right. I was surprised I remember that. Because mm -hmm. I used to quote that when I was at the RTA, and the guy said, write it down. I want, I love that. You have to send that to me. <laughs> I'm I, I surprised it. myself that I remembered it. <laughs> but yeah, when I think back, like when I think back on it, like everybody's journey is different. Uh -huh. like, I'm going I'm to go back to like when I was a kid growing okay. up. Because when you're a child, like you, you eat what you're given. Yes. Like you don't, 
you know, I'm pretty sure everybody's mother say that, you know, when they're growing up. What we eating? And like, there wasn't no second dinner or no third option. Like, you got what, you know, what we could afford. Yes. And back then, I, you know, I know now, like, those foods weren't the healthiest. You know, hot dogs and pork and beans and sugar sandwiches, syrup sandwiches, uh, all these things. Like, you know about that? Yeah, I know about all of that. You know what I mean? But yeah. like we didn't complain uh -huh. because back then it was like, this is food. Yes. You know, I wasn't thinking about how unhealthy it was. Yes. Um, you know, you got you had your government cheese. You know, we were products of uh WIC and um yeah. you know, low income housing and you know what comes with that territory. So, you know, um now I just look at everything differently. Um you, like back then McDonald's was a luxury. <laughs> Like you got that during a, a graduation or a celebration, but like now, like you can, you can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and probably spend about five to ten dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, they made it cheaper now, which lets me know that the grade and quality of food that they're using is not, you know, it's not of value. Okay. You know, so I just think about those things and just try to maintain and learn as much as I can. I'm, I'm in a process now of. Uh, I've been doing some research, just reading some science articles and things like that, and I want to develop a, a ebook, a, mm -hmm. a herb, okay. a herbal ebook. Okay. So I wrote, yeah. I wrote some of these things, these herbs down. Um, you may have heard of them before, you may have not, but if you're listening to this, write these herbs down. Do your own personal research on them. Uh, number one is maca root, I mean that's good for energy. Okay. Um, ashwagandha, that's good for depression. Um, anxiety, like it helps to calm you down. Um, spirulina, chlorella, wheatgrass, bladder rack, alfalfa, sea moss, beet powder, moringa leaf. And there's there's tons more. Yes. But like these are the ones I probably take on a consistent basis. Okay. You know, I mix them in teas, I mix them in foods, I mix them in smoothies. Yes. And they're just like great um, health alternatives other than you know, eating even some of the fruits in the stores. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I, I don't know how long that fruit's been sitting there. You ever <laughs> go to buy strawberries and they're rotten when yes. you get to the store? Yes. And it's just like, how, how is that happening? So. And that means that doesn't have the nutritional value when it goes that far to the left or rotten? And... Exactly. Okay. So I don't know the, uh, like, you shouldn't buy rotten fruit. Like, okay. that's just not, that's, that just doesn't seem safe. Okay. So like these are some some health alternatives for all of you out there that you know want to adapt a more healthy lifestyle. Um, yeah, just try it out. See if it helps you. And you mentioned moringa, and I remember a lot of times I get some of the moringa in my African black soap. Okay. Uh, one of the guys from uh, Ghana, he said he had a moringa tree in his front yard. Oh, that's <laughs> Those nice. Things just there, but we, for the most part, know nothing about. What, what, what benefits did you found in the Moringa plant? I heard you mention Moringa. Uh, well, the Moringa is, is full of antioxidants. Okay. Um, so a lot of these herbs clean your blood too. Okay. Like they're blood cleaners. Um, even certain teas, like uh, um, have you heard of nettle stinging tea? Yes. Like it's equivalent to like an antihistamine. So okay. like if you're having trouble sleeping, uh -huh. um, lavender, um, yes. red, red clover tea, like all of these things, yes. there's so many out there. Um, have you followed Dr. Sabi? I know I haven't that I can remember. It. He's a doc he's a doctor. Uh, well, he's a herbalist. Okay. He's from Honduras. Okay. Um, he passed in I want to say 2016, but okay. you know, he's he's world renowned like to okay. to heal um a lot of individuals. Okay. Um I believe he beat he won a case. Um beat the Supreme Court. Like he is he's known to have uh, found a cure for AIDS through Okay. through these herbs yes so but there's a lot of controversy around that but um pharmaceuticals probably don't want to hear about him no <laughs> are some of those things that you say uh, on youtube maybe i know a lot of things on youtube oh yeah i'm sure now, you could find a lot of videos okay now that. you say his name is dr sabi s s s e b i yes yes there was some controversy I, now now i know what you're talking about right about his dying Yes. Because he was uh, able to find so many cures. Correct. Yes, now I know who you're talking about Sabi. Yes. And so, the different pronunciation I had. Yes. So he has tons of uh, information yes. out there, tons of books. 
mm -hmm. um, with uh, natural herb remedies and uh -huh. things like that. So, you know, my dad, he just had, uh, he had surgery. His cancer came back. Okay. Um, uh, back in 2021. Um, and this time it was in his lungs. Okay. So he just had uh, lung cancer maybe a few weeks ago. Okay. So he's in recovery now. So I start doing some more research after that. I'm like, man, what's what's a what's a herb out there that's good for lung function? Yes. And I came across this tea called mullinin. Mullinin tea. Mullinin. 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 M U L L E I N. Yes, mullinin tea. Yes. Believe it or not, it grew wild down in the south. My family's from Louisiana. Okay. And my father and used to make cough syrup out mm. of that mullein tea. Have you guys ever uh, made elderberry? I've had syrup? elderberry. Okay. The only thing that's scary about elderberry, I looked at it and said the seeds are uh, toxic sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they actually sell the uh, elderberry seeds at yes. the health food store. Yes. So I've had those as well. Yes, the leaves, and the, but the berries, I've had those. And one time I got a little shock. I got a bunch of berries, boiled. I started chewing the seeds, and I started looking up on it. They said the seeds might be toxic. Mm. Too much of it, but elderberries and the leaves. Oh yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. You good. can buy the syrup also. Yes, they do. I get the syrup as well. Yes. Um, but I just uh, try to, you know, when I do talk to my dad, I'm always trying to educate him on, on those things, on these herbs and stuff. And like where he is, my dad's in Michigan. Okay. That's where I'm from originally. Okay. But I've been in Dayton for, uh, it'll be 14 years oh, this year. Okay. I moved here in 2008 in oh. May. Okay. So I've been, you know, I've been around. I've been, been around. In, huh? I've been in the community, <laughs> mostly working in like in the housing realm. Yes. You know, I've I've done case management for those with mental illness. Okay. You know, I've I've been a director of a, a an emergency assistance program. Um, now I'm I'm working in recovery housing for those who are, you know, um, have a mental illness yes. and uh, you know trying to continue their sobriety and stay on that positive. That positive path. Yes. So, yeah, like I but said. You know, I, I, you mentioned the lungs about your dad mm -hmm. and seeing all of the things, especially the COVID and a lot of other things that tax the lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, just for our listening audience, what are some of the herbs that you uh, mentioned that's good for strengthening and building or restoring lungs function or? Well, as far as I know right now, that mullein and tea, like okay. that, when I looked it up, that was the first thing that popped yes. up. So yes. I started reading on that because, you know, my dad, he's still in recovery. Okay. You know, his surgery, they cut him, you know, from his left chest all the way to his back. Mm. So I, I've never seen a scar like that big. I was mm. like, wow. So, but he's doing well. I spoke with him yeah. yesterday and um, he's, he's recovering quite well, but I actually had to... Uh, mail him the tea because where he is they don't they don't have those kind of resources there where he can go to right. a health food store yeah so when i go to visit I, i'm sure to i take him his care package make sure he's um taking those supplements yes yes but uh i mean to each his own too oh, like yeah. i'm not trying to sway anybody from you know some if you might have something that works for you oh, and yeah. like you might feel fine so yeah. I just want to share some information. Well, we don't take it, it from one particular area. So many different areas right. that we. I mean, I'm not. I'm not just stuck on one particular thing. Mm -hmm. Is there something else that benefit? You might have been slow at using one thing, and here's something else that's natural. Right. Uh, I often say, if I live to be a hundred years old, there's still something more to be learned. Mm. We never get to the place we get a doctor degree in any of this. That's true. And even sometimes those guys are professional. Some little person that comes in that may not be a professional in knowledge or academics mm -hmm. or not even be able to uh, be um, uh, able to share from a, a perspective, a, a educated perspective, uh, what I'm saying, an unlearned person right. could know something about the health and wealth. Like I said, a lot of guys down in the hills of Kentucky, they got these little places, little mm -hmm. running herbs and so right. forth that they claim, I don't know if they own the land, but they claim because they know where it is, mm -hmm. that it's healthy, but they may not be educated enough to be intellectual to put it in a book, right. but they pass it by the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So everything that comes through the book might not cover everything right. that grandpa or grandma or something mm -hmm. passed on like you were sharing. I know my dad, uh, they used to use some type of the, something out of the pine tree mm -hmm. and mix it with the mullein. 
That's why it stuck out when you mentioned the mowing. Mm. But that might be something somebody else that helped to strengthen the lung. Right. So you feel like they did help to strengthen the lungs for your dad. Definitely. And like now I take it. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I, I actually did have COVID. Okay. Um, back in January. Okay. And like that was, you know, my symptoms were mild, but like those first three days, uh -huh. I could barely move. Okay. You know, I had the aches and joints and pains, but like the, the worst part about it was not being able to engage with my family. Yes. You know, that... That uh, those responsibilities got put on my wife, and it made things more difficult for her. Yes. So, health is critical, yeah. you know. And I had time. I had 14 days to quarantine in a room. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't hug my children. Yeah. I couldn't kiss my wife. Yeah. You know, I couldn't sleep with my wife. Like, that, that's the longest. <laughs> I really I, miss you. Right. That's the longest <laughs> I ever went when I was sleep with her. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just I take it serious. I don't yeah. try to condemn anybody for. Yeah for not doing these things or not taking these things into consideration either. Because yeah. that's, you know, you hear that rhetoric out there too. Yeah. Oh, you eat meat, you eat meat. <laughs> oh, you drink soda. Yeah. Oh, like, I don't, I'm not that guy. Right. But uh, I just wanna, you know, share any wealth of knowledge that I have. Yeah. So I appreciate just you. But little is eat. much. Yeah. <laughs> little is much when it out. <laughs> Thank you. The Thank bit you. of it, yeah. And a lot of times I think sometimes people hold back information. I did as a minister years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't anymore, even when it comes to the word. You almost get, oh, everybody know that. Mm -hmm. But then I realized sometimes I was sharing some simple things that I thought everybody knew. And somebody said, I never heard that. Right. So now whether they think people understand or not, just share it. Mm -hmm. They benefit, they help. Exactly. And you mentioned something else about the energy at the top of, uh, you were talking about the different herbs. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to write it down, but what was the other herb? It was energy? a maca root. Maca root. Yes. M-A-C-C-A. It's M-A-C-A. Then root. It's R-O-O-T. Yes. I've heard of that. Yeah. So I take that like every morning. You know, okay. I mix it in some, I can mix it in some water. Okay. And it just gets me a, so it's a good alternative than coffee. Okay. You know what I mean? But like coffee is good for you too, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you don't put a pound of sugar and <laughs> two pounds of cream. <laughs> cause that's that, coffee cake. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, just again, another alternative than, you know, yeah. uh, pop or, yeah. you know, those coffee cake, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, when more people start looking on the labels now mm -hmm. and there's some mislabeling. But when Mrs. Obama was in the uh, White House with her husband, uh, the Obamas was there. She was trying to get the schools to take the soda machines out. Mm of the schools, of course, the kids want it, they love it, you know, I mean, you know, this is the best thing there is. Right. Taste-wise, and the fizz and the blizz. But actually, when you look at the amount of high fructose corn syrup yes. that goes into that, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm into the water, a little bit water business too with the Kagan water, and we learned that if you were to take all the high fructose corn syrup out of you, wouldn't want to drink right. what was left because it really masks the taste of what it really tastes like. Right, and certain dairy products as well, mm -hmm. like milk. Like I don't, I don't drink milk as often as I used to. Okay. I used to love milk, because yes. I, I used to eat a lot of cereal too, which okay. is also high in you know, corn syrup. And okay. everything, if you look, I don't care what label you look at, almost everything has uh, added sugar. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? So like even with the fruits, like if they're looking, uh, you know, pale or rotten at the stores, mm -hmm. I'll go in a frozen section and just buy frozen fruit. Okay. But I, I try to make sure the bag says no added sugar. Yes. Yes. Because I know I want natural fruit. I don't want exactly. I don't want imitation fruit. Right. You know and, what I mean. And there's enough natural sugar that's quite sweet. Right. Uh, even myself, a lot of times, I people thought, well, I never thought about it years ago. But if I drink coffee now, I use honey. Hmm. And people say. Well, that tastes funny, and I learned the <laughs> secret from that. If you use too much, it doesn't take as much honey to sweeten it as it does sugar. Right. So if you just sort of gauge it and to you understand what the amount, just to make it mm -hmm. the sweetness without oversweetening it, it doesn't even taste like honey in the cold. Right. Now honey's good for you, like clover honey. Uh, yes. Um, cane sugar is yes. more, you know, is better than uh, granulated sugar. Okay. Also, uh, I'm learning about dates. Like okay. dates are another sweetener you can use that's a little bit more healthy for you too. Right. Um, agave, 
Yes. So yes. yeah, those things are they're they're pretty good for you. And you know, those that have diabetes, I learned too. Grape has such a high sugar content, mm -hmm. natural. Right. You don't really need anything added to it. That's true. And so I guess when you learn the different fruits and vegetables that you can eat. Mm -hmm. And another thing is I started to tell early, I don't know how much you get into it, but I know when you were talking about the rotting fruits not being good. Mm -hmm. There is a special time for even vegetables, I understand, to be picked. Right. But you get the highest level of nutrients. Mm. It's a little hard when you have to go to the store, though. It's difficult. Um, yeah. Like, I love, I love watermelon. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yes. I can't remember the last time I bought a sweet watermelon. Yes. Like, I'm like, this, I don't know if this is watermelon. Because, <laughs> like, there's a lot of, like, genetically modified foods okay. out here, too. Yes. You know, they're growing food in labs now. Yes. Um, the chicken wings are, <laughs> notice how big the chickens are now? Oh, like, yeah. they Turkey. big, big as me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> i just been noticing that. Uh, yeah. I'm like, man, why is this chicken so big? Like, yeah. this is huge. Like, where did this chicken steroids? Grow? Exactly. And then when you eat it, the steroids don't die in the fire, mm. so you get those steroids into your body. Exactly. And some say that's why some of our young girls so develop, young men develop, right. because it's not so much the time, but it's more or less the steroids that mm. was did, did not actually die in the fire. There's a lot of horm growth hormones that don't die in the fire when you feed to stop with that type of thing. That's true. It gets into the body of whoever protect. Uh, the old saying say you are what you eat. That is very true. So, uh, I don't know. Um, are you familiar with uh, um, alkaline, alkaline water? Yes, 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 yes. So yes. like I try to drink alkaline water too because like like I, I mentioned the uh, dairy products. Uh -huh. They say a lot of those cause uh, um, bacteria Mm -hmm. well, they call they cause mucus. Okay. Dairy products build mucus in your body, uh -huh. and bacteria live in mucus. Yes. So like that's how people get a lot of diseases. You okay. know, that's how colds come, and that's how, you know, all these things start happening in your body. Start getting these physical ailments. Okay. So like bacteria can't survive in an alkaline environment. You're so right. like it helps your pH balance yes. in your body too. Yes. And would you believe you're drinking nine point five? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, well, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> because I also uh, promote the, uh, the Cajun water, K-A-G-E-N, Cajun water. Yes. And the, the thing is, it's a natural process because, I hate to say, a lot of our drinking water, I mean, years ago I was in college. It blew my mind back then, but more people are becoming aware of it now. When we learned, I can't even remember what the class was, but all of our water comes from the city above wastewater. Mm. And then we take it out of the river and we sterilize it or purify it chemically. Mm. And all of ours go to make you feel good about that. <laughs> well, you said the river. I was like, oh, yeah. man. And the uh. wastewater from our city. <laughs> and this is something I, I, I learned years ago mm. when I was taking some college classes. And I thought everybody knew. But now we're becoming more knowledgeable because they're using so many chemicals to purify the water. Right. And now what we have... Uh, we have uh, lye, mm. fluorine, chlorine. Wait a minute. Mm. Right. That That's is true. some of the chemicals that purify the water, but what is it doing to our bodies? Exactly. That's just uh, like the natural food store. Mm -hmm. um, I know Rick Poole, he just opened a water store next okay. to the health food store. Yes. And at first I was like, who would go to the store to just buy water? But I'm like, this isn't just normal water. This right. is like Cajun and alkaline water. And I'm like, water is life. Yes. Like you need water to oh, survive. Yeah. Like your our bodies are made up of 80% water. Yes. So it's it's extremely important. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend everybody drink your water. Yeah. As and much you know, as you can. It's sad because there's so much scam, and everything. When people learn a bit of truth, mm -hmm. the big marketers just jump in there on it. Right. In fact, you could take a teaspoon of soda and make it alkaline. Mm. You could chemically alkaline water, and that's another thing that they don't talk about a lot. It's, uh, I, f I went in the store and saw a black water. Okay. And it was made from, like, charcoal. Okay. Um, never seen that before. It was uh, probably filtered through charcoal. Right. And give it that. And, you know, this is a little different on the subject. When I was in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, 
when they would drain the vats because they used a charcoal filter. Mm -hmm. And that's why they call that black beer or bock beer, because mm -hmm. it sits right above the charcoal. When you go to clean, they sell that black beer and uh, dark beer could be up to 20% alcohol. <laughs> just just gotcha. because but I, I thought about the charcoal. One of the highest filtration, the best filtration is charcoal. Mm. And so also in that machine that we talk about with the Cajun, it filters, they have two charcoal filters that filters the water before it goes through. Plus it goes to the, elect uh, the electric shock part of purifying the water, making the molecules smaller, and mm. natural alkalization. Uh, natural alkalization, we used to explain it as being a lightning bolt when it hit the lake. Gotcha. You smell that fresh smell after the lightning bolt hit after the rain. Mm -hmm. It has alkalized that water instantly when that lightning bolt hit and purified. So it's something that the Japanese, they're the only one that the machine patent mm. and only medical grade. And also, uh, Ricky Poole also had that up to his shop. You probably see Cajun water. Right. Much. Yeah, I see a lot of customers uh, bringing their big jars in to yes. get refills. Yes. And uh, thanks for breaking that down for me, yes. too. Yes, water is Cajun life. Water. It is. And, you know, and the way they, the, the machine is, it electrifies it. It goes through it as a constant. They have some knockoffs on the market that is not mm -hmm. what they're supposed to be. Like I said, everybody bandwagon when they learn a little bit of truth right. for the sales. That's true. But the old song we just sing, ain't nothing like the real thing. That's true. Got, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the real things are few and far in between, but when you want the best. I, 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 I'm not trying to destroy any market, any things of that nature, but mislabeling and another thing that we find quite often. Someone right. sent me a, something years ago and said we need to talk to, to the grocers and tell them quit selling that which is not real honey. What they were talking about is high fructose corn syrup, mm -hmm. honey flavored. And a lot of that has to do with marketing too. Yes. You know, they'll use those key those key buzzwords on packages. Yes. You know, grain fed. Yes. Uh, you know, what's another word on there? <laughs> um, 50 percent less sugar uh -huh. um, just like diet pop like diet sodas like those actually have the most sugar mm -hmm. so just little things like that and the chemicals I understand is some of the same chemicals they use in fly spray and mm. <laughs> other pesticides pesticides yes when you know the ingredients but my goodness how many people go down there aspartame not on what, what and because they came from <laughs> now the names oh it, it may be okay but Right. Actually, if you research those names, That's as you do, you say, hey, am I really putting this into my body? Right. And like even even going to the doctor now, mm -hmm. like if I feel anything going on, like I'm going to the doctor immediately. Uh -huh. Like I'm not the guy that waits around. I'm like, well, I'm going a, I'm to a walk that off. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. So it's nice to talk to. It's, it's especially nice to talk to like elders, yes. you know, people older than me mm -hmm. because, you know, they can they can share those experiences. Yes. In those situations, and like, give me, give me good advice. Yes. Like, take care of yourself. I think I work with a guy named Mark Davis. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the building like manager where I work at MBHO. And okay. like, he he said something to me um, last week, and it, it made me feel real good. And he was like, "Yeah, I mean, like, man, it's it's good." To t he said, "It's good to talk to you. It's good to talk to young folks yes. that." That um, got the heads on straight. Got your head on straight, and <laughs> yeah. he said, he said, I feel good about passing the baton to you. Yeah. And I was like, I, you don't hear that often, right? You know what I mean? I don't have those conversations. Yeah. You know, everybody I know that's, you know, close to me that are older, you know, they have, you know, passed on. So, yeah. it's, and, it's you know, a lot of things were passed by word of mouth, right? And a lot of times, uh, we were thankful for pharmaceuticals and big pharma, the things that doctors, broken bones, and so forth. But there are some things. Because the greed is way out. Oh yeah. Beyond, and it started from the used to be in old old Western days. There was a snake oil doctor, mm. which is big pharmaceuticals today. Oh yeah, it's big business. Yes. These medications, and you know, you look at uh, look at Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Coat Team. Coat. It uh, stands for Community Overdose Action Team. Okay. So like you know, I, I believe. 2021, I think uh, Montgomery County went up like 3.5 percent on mm -hmm. like accidental overdose deaths. Oh wow! So you got fentanyl out here, and they lacing it with heroin and yes. all these things. And like I don't mean to get off topic too, but you know it's like America is 
-hmm. trillions of dollars in debt. Yes. But they don't teach financial literacy in any of the schools. Right. So it's, you know, something's wrong with that yeah. picture. And in the health industry, like you said, uh, people are sick that don't necessarily have to be sick. Exactly. Because if they're making the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And just I learned about what that uh, years ago about the honey. Holistic people were sharing for years, you get honey for the allergies and the things. The best honey is the bees that make the honey in the area in which you live. Right. And that's better than buying honey from California. That's true. Like, even when you look at these commercials that come on for mm -hmm. these medications that they promote. Yes. Like, when you look at the actors in a the commercial, they look so happy. Uh -huh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this, I'm able to live a normal and happy life now. And then you look at the small uh, print. You look at the small print, no side effects. <laughs> you know, vomiting, dizziness, yes. uh, and death. Yes. Even death. And yes. it's like, man, like, how can you... How can you be so happy about taking something that's probably like just destroying all of your organs? And they just had to do that, I think maybe 15, 20 years ago, made a law that they had to tell you some of the side effects before they weren't getting anything. Right. And then when you hear it on the radio, it's, they say it within like two seconds. Yes. It's like, do you don't even get to hear like what those the side effects are? Yeah. <laughs> the music drowns it out. Exactly. And, and that's something we have to be more aware of. I know a lot of times I'm in a hurry, we all in a hurry, but you know, when you stop and read some of the ingredients, even on some of the packages mm -hmm. that we're getting, it's there because now by law, they have to tell you so many of the things that's, that are. That's true. And you have a choice of whether you want to take that or not. And I think mm -hmm. you said something a little bit earlier about we go for what is cheap. Exactly. And it used to bother me. I, I just said, why in the world would you get a Lamborghini, a BMW, a Cadillac, mm -hmm. And then you go to the worst part of the store and buy all the leftovers and the expired food. Right. So you put the worst in your body to live in luxury. Exactly. <laughs> and like money can't buy you uh, good health. Yeah. You know, I look, I think about uh, Steve Jobs, the creator of uh, Apple. Uh huh. You know, he had pancreatic cancer. This is one of the richest men in the world at that time. Oh, yeah. And you know, his money couldn't buy him li buy his life or g give him more time. Right. You know, so it's it's important, especially with our young kids. Um, I was talking to my brother, and I think one of the best things he he's done he's showing my uh, you know, my nephew how to farm. Uh huh. And like how to plant his own vegetables and uh, fruits and things like that. So. I think that's a skill we can uh, teach our children. Yes. You know, to grow their own uh, vegetables and fruits and things like that because, you know, at least you know the source of where it's coming from. Right. You know what you're putting in it. And, like, there's no preservatives or pesticides like you mentioned earlier. Yes. You know, so that's that's critical. And, you know, it would be, uh, I, I was thinking myself when I was coming up, probably, I know before you, <laughs> almost mm -hmm. every home, every family had a fruit tree in the yard, mm. a peach tree, an apple tree, a plum tree. Most in every neighborhood, our neighborhood, all had at least some fruit tree in a little garden by the house. Right. But we have lost all of that. We are so dependent mm -hmm. on the market now, so we don't have any control right. over the things that we eat. That's true. And so we're eating a lot of things like the genetic modified. I was thinking about it a little bit when you were talking about the watermelon. My wife and I used to talk about it quite often. Mm -hmm. The good book, the Bible tells us everything after its own seed. True. Now it's popular to say se uh, seedless. Seedless watermelon. <laughs> well, oh, wait a minute, how did you? You used to the black seeds, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, what happened? Is it really watermelon? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But, like, see, those are the questions, like, we should be asking. Yes. Those are the questions everybody should be asking. Grapes? Grapes. Seedless grapes. It's almost hard to find grapes with seeds in them anymore. Right. But getting seed, go to the health store and get grape seed oil. That's just true. Which is very expensive. Now, wait a minute. What happened to the market? Mm. Why we go to grocery? And we like the convenience. I ain't got to worry about no seeds. <laughs> right. I just think it's important for everybody to just, you know, just think about, you know, what you're eating before you, before you pick it up. Yes. You know, go... And it's, it's difficult because, like, we, you know, we live in a, a time now where, like, everybody's busy. It's go, 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 go. I got to yes. go to work. I got to drop the kids off. I got to pick the kids up. I got to get home. I got to try to make dinner. 
Yes. You know what? I don't feel like cooking dinner. Let me go to this Burger King right quick and get this Whopper. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm going to get my kids a Happy Meal to uh, shut them up. And, uh, yeah, we'll be okay. Yeah. And, like, you do that over time, and then, you know. Yes. Um, diabetes, high cholesterol. Yes. Um, high blood pressure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, actually, our health is our wealth. Definitely. Because you will be able to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. And liberty, right? And, but and then what? What is good to have a billion dollars, and you hook to life support, right? Or oxygen. Yeah, tank. your health is. Uh, I say your health is a necessity. Like <laughs> water, water yeah. is a necessity. Like housing is a necessity. Yeah. Um, and good healthy foods are a necessity. Like so, you need to. Everyone needs to uh, think about those things yes. because, um, yeah. You want to live as long as you can. I want to be around for my children. Right. You know, my daughters are uh, four and ten. Yes. So, you know, and I, I don't want to take that for granted. Like, right. I want to enjoy as many moments as I can with them, you know, while I'm here. Yeah. And, you know, maybe 50 years later, they can, they can watch this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. This, this will live forever. Yes. And, you know, the thing is that, that and I think that's one thing, uh, one, one family member had told me once, they want, they're concerned about their health because we all have a point in time to live on this life, period. Mm-hmm. But their thing was, at least I want to be upright. I want to be walking around. Right. Rather than being hooked to a machine for two years out of my life, three years, or six months even. Right. If that's the way I go, if I had to go, I old saying said, I'd rather wear out mm-hmm. than rust out. That's true. <laughs> and like... I look at it like uh, I feel like your health is the best thing you can invest in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you got the stock market. Like, look at your health like the stock market. Yes. Like, I need to put, I need to put the most money in my health. Like, I, I, that takes precedence over any any stock that's out there. Like, right. I don't care about the stock market. It's important. You know, I'm long term investor. Uh huh. But like your health, that's an everyday investment. Yes. Yes. And so, in other words, you're going to shock or, or, or cut back on your health so you can buy more stocks. Right. And when your stock mature, you can't enjoy them even exactly. afterwards. <laughs> because when your health deteriorates, that's the last thing you're going to think about. Yes. You're not going to be thinking about the stock market. Yes. You're not going to be thinking about what kind of car you want to drive, what shoes you're wearing, yes. um, what uh, your fancy suit, what restaurant you want to go to. You're going to say, man, I should have took care of myself. Yes. I wish I had more time, yes. and like you, you can't buy more time. So, I I just highly encourage everybody out there to just make more conscious health decisions. Yes. And your health is your wealth. But uh, it's so important that we be conscious of this, and also to make our children conscious of it. Definitely. Because if we love our children, one of the other shows I had. One of the older guys said he said he wanted his children to be able to enjoy life at 71 years old if they live to be that, you know. Mm-hmm. And in, in other words, we invest in our children, but we also have to invest in ourselves. Home. I have a sister now. She's mm-hmm. trying to go back, one of the babies of the family. Mm-hmm. She have a garden every year and she even got garden inside. She raising things and plant. Nice. And the thing because she said, I want to know what my children and I'm, I'm eating. Right. And her children is learning because the mother is doing it. Exactly. And those things that it might not be able to get in school, may not go to the educated place, we ourselves can teach our children how to eat healthier. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we're allowed them to be spoiled, and the kids are telling us what, what they want. Right. And it's not for the children to dictate to the parents what they want. Exactly. But for the parents to see what's best for the children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your children will follow suit. Yes. Like they see you doing it. Oh, like yes. They'll, they'll pick up on that. Oh, yes. So, I, uh, you know, I pride myself on, uh, you know, trying to, you know, sh- show be a good example of, uh, you know, being healthy and, like, introducing it to them as well. Yes. You know, they love smoothies. And, like, I, <laughs> I put some of everything in them. And, like, they have no clue. It's just like, it's good because, you know, the fruit is going to overpower yes. everything. So oh, it's yeah. going to be sweet regardless. Oh, yes. So, Natural, sweet. exactly. But you know, I, I learned we are so spoiled to it now. Mm-hmm. Out of all the countries, America have the sweetest candy. Yes, Holly. America is also the most obese yes. country. 
And I, when I eat pastries when I was in Europe, it's not sugar sweet like ours. Mm. It's almost old thing we used to call tea cakes, just lightly. Did you go to France? I passed, no, I was mostly in Germany. I went to England, around England, and I spent a little time vacation in Spain. Okay. Yes. But I didn't do a lot in France. You know something about France? I actually, I took French. Okay. For like three years. Okay. Um, I'm a little rusty, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was actually, uh, because when I was in um, undergrad, I was considering um, international business. Okay. So I actually had the opportunity to go to France and study. But uh -huh. like at that time, in my young mind, I wish I would have took advantage of that at that okay. time because that just would have gave me an opportunity to learn about another country and see how they live. But well, it is. It's important. It's awesome. uh, the thing is, I did military time, but a lot of things you learn when you're in other countries that, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, France, I believe in Italy, uh, the water is not as good. Mm. So a lot of times they drink uh, champagne or uh, wine. Uh, even the children drink what they call a fruit champagne. Hmm. It's not to get drunk because the water, I guess if you don't have good water, you take the alternative. Right. And then again, the wine that they drink is not like the American chef down to the, with the corner store wine. Store. Right. I le <laughs> learned you on our water program studying that even some of that cheap wine have formaldehyde in it. Right. Like Boone's Farm. Yes. <laughs> to get, to get you to keep Wild Eyes Rose, right. MD twenty twenty. What you know about that stuff? Yeah, I grew up in the inner city. You know, I see. I've seen more bottles on the ground of that than I've actually seen people drinking it. You know what I mean? You walk yeah. past. I've seen an MD twenty twenty. Yeah. And, uh, and they even even said rock good. Guess when it's rock good? Right. You know what you're speaking of, but yet and still you are killing yourself inside yes, out. Exactly. I had an uh, auntie that retired at the VA. Mm -hmm. And she has some stories, and I'm going to tell you, it's so sad. They were so caught up, the doctor might tell uh, his patient that you keep drinking that, you're not going to live long. Mm. And as soon as they could, they would slip across the street and get him another drink. Mm. It's almost like, oh, okay, i got to go with something, but until that time comes. Right. But we have to be cautious and look ahead. That's true. And to look ahead for our children. There's no greater wealth we can give our child than the education on how to eat right. That's true. And my hats was really off to Mrs. Obama because they sort of kicked her to the curb on it, but she was concerned about our children right. in the public school system, chugging down high fruit course corn syrup. Right. Eh, corn is good, but then again, uh, you said something here, corn fed, grain fed. Mm -hmm. what, that, what, they, what they tell you? They fatten it up so you can eat. Right. And I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Yes. Um, I would love to go into the schools, um, you know, dating public and like just speak about these things because, yes. you know, if, you, if you're not hearing it at home, yes. you know, at least you can go to school and, and learn a little bit more about it. So, yes. like, I hope the educators will be open to, you know, having some right. type of initiative like that. And I think the sad thing is because a lot of times in ignorance, some of the parents fought against what even Ms. Obama was trying to bring in. Mm. My kids can drink, drop if they want to. Right. It's not about what they want to. It's about are you investing in their health? Exactly. Or are you investing in what they want? Right. The good book is a train of child in the way he should go. That's true. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm. So even the good book let us know it's up to the parents to train the child. Exactly. Even if they had a tamper and fall out in the street, and kick your feet. I mean, okay, you got your tantrum, but long run, I'm looking at your health. Right. That's just like discipline. If we don't discipline our children, the streets would discipline it. That is true. The police are disciplined. Mm -hmm. Someone is going to discipline. If we don't discipline, that's another little subject. But I, uh, old professor has said, chase a rabbit to bring a little meat back to the table. Right. But the same thing in behavior is the same thing in the way we eat. They may not want it. I know how many people that I grew up with hated beans, they hated greens, they hated, mm -hmm. and when they become adult, not, they say, I don't know what's wrong with me, I love these stuff. Right, I was the same way. <laughs> I was the exact same yes. way. Yes. No beans, no greens, yes. no spinach. I didn't want any of that stuff. That now with what you know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> want to grow something in your backyard. <laughs> right, definitely. Yeah. Well, I know that you're a very successful person, and you're working with the Mama Bella Housing, and so forth, and you've got run into a lot of people, and you're interested, you seem to be a caring person. What would be some of the advice that you'd like to share with 
uh, the general public, the young people and the old people, about? Uh, we know the subject of your health is your wealth. Is there something that we might not even talk about God put on your mind to share with some of the ones at home that will be watching this production today? Um, mainly just really take care of your body. You know, watch what you're eating. You know, read labels. Um, and just do your due diligence and uh, do some research. Like, look up on these things. Um, I've mentioned some herbs earlier. I'll, I'm going to run through them again. Uh -huh. Maca root, ashwagandha, spirulina, chlorella, wheatgrass, bladder rack, alfalfa, sea moss, beet powder, and moringa. So, like, look those up and just, uh, you know, I'll let you do the research and, like, Whatever you want to do with that information is, is up to you. But, you know, I highly recommend everybody get on a good health regimen so you can live a long-lasting life. Yes. And so, your health is still, you're talking about, uh, what's his name, Mr. Mr. Rick Poole. Rick Poole. Mr. Poole, grow wheatgrass right there in the store. It used to for years. I guess yes, you, know. you could buy it. Yes, grow it right there yeah. in the store. Yeah. Then, therefore, he know what he's growing and you know what you're getting. Exactly. Because the market is so fabricated, and that's something I, I can't express, express enough. Just like alkaline water you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. People, well, this is alkaline water. You need <laughs> to read the small print. How did it become right. alkaline? That is true. You could put lye, not enough to kill something. You could put lye in water and make it alkaline. Mm. But is lye good for your system? No. <laughs> But yeah, that that would be my advice. Yes. And just uh, you know, live life, yeah. be happy, be blessed, wake up, pray, and just uh, try to be as productive as you can throughout your day. Make a difference, and uh, gain wisdom. Yes. Knowledge is power. Applied knowledge is power. Yeah. Applied. There. Yeah. There you go. Applied <laughs> knowledge is power, and that make it wisdom. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, one thing I'd say, I start to say, even we were talking about how some of the drugs, they play the music and make small print when they tell you the dangers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the bottle, water, I know it's not pointed out to some, the bottle is blue and the writing is blue. Mm. You're not going to spend time, most persons try to read to see what that's saying, but right. sometimes it's worth it. That's true. They take that extra moment. Because when you're thirsty, you're thirsty. Yes. You're just ready to drink. So. And if it's cold, you drink it. Exactly. But what is it if it wasn't cold? That's the same thing about you ever drink a soda pop warm? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> okay. You have any closing remarks? We at the end of the show. <laughs> I don't, but I, I appreciate you having me here. I enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. And uh, I would love to come back. Yes, we're glad to have you. That let us know we got young people that are smart, educated, and it's not just the old folks that think it's old school. Right. But the old school around her because what? They did something right. Definitely. <laughs> so those of you at home, once again, your health is your wealth. How much wealth do you have today? <laughs>